It's Wednesday, the 7th of September. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lario channel here at the Phoenix affiliate office in between trips. I'm getting a lot of questions about the de Havilland turbine otter that went down on Sunday, the 4th of September, starting first with the Aviation Safety Network. Here's what little we know so far. This accident occurred about 1508 local time off of Whidbey Island. The aircraft involved is November 725 Tango Hotel operated by Friday Harbor Seaplane Tours, according to the Aviation Safety Network. This is a 1967 model of Turbine Otter, powered by the General Electric H-80 engine, which I believe is the Walters aircraft conversion, or engine conversion for this aircraft. The, remember, the Turbine Otter came out stock with the Pratt & Whitney 1340 radial engine, but most Otters that are in operation today have been converted to turboprop engines. And the three popular turboprop conversions are the Pratt & Whitney PT6A, the Garrett, and this Walters turboprop conversion. The Walters engine comes from Czechoslovakia. There was one confirmed fatality and nine missing. The search for the missing has been called off. This aircraft was en route from Friday Harbor to Renton, Washington, and is used for a non-scheduled part 135 operation to haul people back and forth to the beautiful San Juan Islands up in the Pacific Northwest from the Seattle area. And they were very busy this Labor Day weekend flying folks back and forth and looking at the preliminary ADSB data from Flight Radar 24. It shows them at an altitude a typical altitude, and this is normal for this, this flight, as these are float-equipped aircraft of only six to 700 to 1,000 feet above the water along the route. And at the end of this flight, it looks like this aircraft did a climb up to about 1,000 feet and then plunged suddenly into the water. So there's a sudden decrease in altitude and in ground speed. Remember, as an aircraft descends nearly vertical, that ground speed is going to drop to nearly zero. Initial reports from witnesses claim they heard a loud bang before the aircraft hit the water. So looking at this data plus the eyewitness reports of the loud bang, this strongly suggests some form of structural failure on the aircraft. What exactly failed on this aircraft won't be known until investigators find the aircraft. They've got to find the aircraft. This aircraft sank very quickly as soon as it hit the water in an area of strong currents. And so they're going to have to dig up the wreckage. And the first thing investigators will do is to check all four corners of the aircraft. Do they have the complete aircraft or are there parts missing off of the aircraft that are missing far away from the wreckage? Unfortunately, with in the water with the current, it's gonna be very hard to determine which part of the aircraft fell where. And of course that aircraft's gonna be pretty well busted up from the extreme speed that it hit the water. Prior to hitting the water, the aircraft was operated well within limits, um, but about 125 miles an hour ground speed according to the ADSB data. And if you look at the original operator's handbook for the original Otter with the radial engine, they gave a maneuvering speed of 126 miles an hour. That's a speed that which you can safely hit turbulence with in the aircraft and theoretically not suffer any structural problems. These aircraft being between 50 and 60 years old and having been converted with turboprop engines, have been worked very hard in the field there as float planes, especially in the saltwater environment. This is a punishing environment for these older aircraft. And they do have a history or a list of service bulletins and airworthiness directives, quite a few of them relating directly to the structure of the aircraft. And they have had suffered in-flight breakups in the past and also problems with the stabilizer servo tab system on the aircraft as well, requiring modification, especially once converted to uh, the turboprop conversion. And I want to point out one example here from uh, Canada about a otter that had a wing failure, a fatal wing, wing failure while on flight while turning on final just a few years ago back in 2019. And it highlights some of the issues with 
trying to keep these old airplanes flying properly inspected and the limitations of the inspection process that they are being required to follow at this time. Now in this particular accident back in 2019, it was pretty obvious that this aircraft suffered a wing failure. We don't know what happened to the aircraft on Sunday. As on this previous accident, they found the broken wing still floating above the wreckage, the rest of which sank. What they were able to determine in this previous accident was that this wing lug fitting located right here failed in flight. And the required inspection process was a visual inspection for this particular component as a result of airworthiness directives. And there's the failed part from this previous accident. The wing lug and way down in here they found a fatigue crack, an internal fatigue crack, and they were only able to find that after the component failed. And there's a closer look at the internal fatigue fracture right there. So this points out the limitations of visual inspection on a lot of these older aircraft where looking at the outside surfaces, the component looks fine, but only through non-destructive te testing techniques would you be able to detect an internal crack, a fatigue crack like that inside some of these critical, critical components. Now the way this aircraft went in on Sunday, I would rather suspect that this structural problem probably came from the tail of the aircraft rather than the wings falling off, but we simply just do not know at this time. There's another older AD requiring the addition of a redundant elevator servo tab control rod added to the linkage of the servo tab when you convert the aircraft over to to a turboprop conversion but it sounds like they're still having some service difficulties with the servo tabs on these aircraft the problem with the loss of a servo tab or a trim tab on an aircraft at cruise speed is that it can induce flutter and once that flutter begins in that control surface it can begin to destroy the rest of the flying surface as well and you will soon lose complete control of the aircraft. So again we have no idea what brought the Otter down on Sunday and we won't know until they find the wreckage of the aircraft and begin to sort through it to find out what the failure point was on this airframe. And it also points out the limitations of visual inspection of structural components on these older aircraft. Thanks so much for your support of this aircraft, of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. I gotta go catch a flight. Heading for home. Get some rest.